guys, here we go. Another edition of Mail Call. Got a package from my boy Scott from Hog Farmer Bait Company. And uh, I honestly don't know what's in here. Uh, he just knows I'm gearing up to uh, chase more giant fish. And today, I want to introduce you guys to my, my stagehand here, the, the videographer of the night. Introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Isaac. How old are you, Isaac? Nine. What do you love to do? Whittle. <laughs> <laughs> Big whittle dreams, baby. Okay. And All I right. like to fish and hunt, but... That's right. What's your biggest bass? Uh, 9.7 pounds. That was this year? Yes. What lake was that? Lake Fort. Man, that's a monster. I think we shared that picture, didn't we? My, no, my dad did not get any pictures of it. It was not on a GoPro, nothing. How does that make you feel? Really bad, but <laughs> I caught it, so. <laughs> At least I caught the fish, so I got you the experience of it. That just means we have to catch you a bigger one. Right? Pretty much. Can do it the right way. Okay. Let's see what Scott uh, sent us. Whoa. Boom, represent, represent. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I wouldn't trust another A-Rig um, with the fish that we target with these. Ah, uh, ah, uh, big scrounger heads. The hog wobbler. If you guys aren't familiar with scroungers, uh, they're a jig head with this plastic bill on them. And it gives the bait a uh, pretty wild rotating action. Let's cut one open real quick. Show. Uh -oh. I'm gonna drop this, the snap. So yeah, check that out. Okay, so we're going to want to push this plastic bill up onto that head. And now I haven't done this before, so we're just gonna go for it. Okay. Yep. Nice. So this plastic lip actually gives this lead head a really um, gnarly little wobble and shimmy. And all you do is um, take your favorite soft body plastic and thread it on there. Speaking of which, I think you, uh, your dad might have a pack laying around, huh? Okay, so what we have here is a basic minnow profile and you're just going to want to thread it right onto this scrounger head. This hog wobbler is pretty much perfect size for this 7 inch body. What I like about this compared to other scroungers is the bait keeper that Scott's used here. That's going to help keep your bait rig properly. Fish aren't going to be able to uh, pull the bait down when they short strike it as well. Um, yeah, honestly, you're just going to save uh, some money on, on, on baits. So same thing with rigging any jig head. We're going to insert the hook point into the head of the bait and you want to pay attention and see how, how far that shank is. You want to pay attention to see, you want to take note of, good grief, it's been a long day. All right, here we go again. You believe in you believe in me, Isaac? Can I bust yes, this I, out? No. I mean, a nine-year-old is literally filming this, so it's not going to be your fault. <laughs> that this video might be messed up, but it will be mine. <laughs> I, I think um, we're going to be all right, brother. So. Please edit this out. <laughs> all right. So rigging tip: Whenever you guys are rigging a soft plastic trailer on a jig head. You want to pay attention to how long the shank of the hook is so you rig it straight every time so a way to do that is you can actually cheat and lay the bait alongside the hook here and, and kind of just mark it but in this case there's you know some glitter that i'm just going to use as a visual aid and you want to push it up there in one nice smooth motion so it's not crooked and you want to bring that hook point out in that exit Okay, so when you push it up, 
it's rigged straight, just like that. Because if it's not straight, that scrounger head isn't going to be able to swim properly, and it'll probably just spin and twist, and you're not going to get bit. But yeah, real simple rig. Cast and retrieve, and that plastic bill really brings these things to life. Like, it'll just kind of sit in the water doing this. So, super cool scrounger head from Hog Farmer. Pretty hyped on that. I think we're going to be able to get a big striper and large amount to eat that. And then, boom, what do we have here? The standard Hog Farmer's 5.8. So, what that means, it's a five wire, eight blade Alabama rig. Okay. So, let's go over the components here on his standard rig. And this is his best selling rig. Out of the package, um, you know, it, it doesn't really come pre-bent and I'm going to show you guys uh, how I like to bend the wires and I take a look at the orientation of the wires and typically even in states that allow five hooks I'm only rigging three with hooks it just they seem to eat either the bottom two or the direct middle more times than not uh, very few times have I actually caught fish on the two top hooked baits so now I've kind of just relegated that to dummy trailers or additional blades. Uh, you go through less baits, um, and frankly it's more efficient and safer for the fish. You get la less of the foul hooking phenomenon. And the way I like to set it up is taking a close look at the orientation of these wires here, and I want the one that's most directly centered to be my middle wire, so I don't bend that one. That one's this wire here. So with that in mind, I'm gonna take two of the wires off to the side and slightly bend them down and out. Now you wanna be really careful with the wires because of wire fatigue. Just like if you take a coat hanger and you bend it back and forth multiple times, that wire fatigue will cause that wire to fail. And you catch enough fish with these things, which you will, um, you're going to start losing wires and you're going to start losing fish. So you want to keep that to a minimum, okay? And you want to take two of these arms here and you're going to want to bend them up and away from the rest of the rig. Actually, you see that one right, that wire right there? It's undressed. It doesn't have any blades. That's going to be our center rig. Okay, so we're actually going to take that. Boom. That's going to be our teaser arm. So the teaser arms aren't going to be taking any load from any hooked fish. So you can get pretty gnarly on that angle. So you can kind of push it up and out and really flare it out to, to really increase the overall profile of your simulated school of bait. Okay, and I always rig a bigger bait down the middle typically. So if I'm fishing four inch baits on the bottom here, I'm fishing a five inch spark shad, for example. Because uh, typically those bigger fish will key in on the bigger item and I want them to be directly attached to that straight wire because of that wire fatigue issue that we just discussed. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you take a look here, that's, that's how I rig this five eight spread. And frankly, the more blades, the better, from my experience. Especially as the water temps start to drop as we get it later into the fall and even into the winter. Uh, it's become a staple of the arsenal. You can't deny it, it catches big fish, gets big, big bites. And the components that Scott uses are all, are all high quality. You don't have to replace anything. The swivels are good swivels. Uh, everything's hand twisted. It's legit.